this week on Dave Radio Expenses. This was given to me by a gentleman, contacted me and said, you can have it. All right, I'll get it on the bench and we'll have a closer look. So if I push that, oh, that doesn't work, does it? This was stuck, it was jammed. Someone's been in here and played around with this. Laura and Tommy were lovers. I've got the cabinet out in the workshop. Uh, something I noticed that it needs to be attended to. This is the compartment where the radio sits and they've put some asbestos on the top there. So I need to sort that out. I'm thinking well, I don't, if I take it down it'll definitely make asbestos dust. If I leave it there and just paint it with some um, clear lacquer or something to, to hold the fibres together that might be the best option. Now of course that's there to protect the timber on the top to stop it discolouring where the heat is. There's a lot of heat here. And another thing I noticed, there's little blocks of wood here and down the bottom there's a groove. So I must have had a back on here of some sort to stop you putting your hands in there which is got lots of voltages sitting just there. So there must have been something there. First thing I'm going to do is spray all this area with water then I'll wipe out this dust here and throw out the rags, put them in plastic bags, throw them out and uh, to get any asbestos that may have drifted down here over the years. Uh, that's all cleaned up now and it's clean. There's nothing left of it. I've put the rags in a plastic bag. I'll go and seal it and throw it in the bin. Then I'll soak the asbestos in some uh, clear lacquer. Um, now the cabinet's in pretty good condition apart from some areas like this where it's just been dropped on that corner I'd say. So I need to rebuild that and somehow fill it. Either put some uh, more veneer in there or maybe just fill it and colour it. There's another bit there, that's, that's got the veneer missing as well. Once again, looks like it's been dropped in the corner. Now something's rubbed on that too, I've lost the colour there. But luckily, this front grill is in good condition, that's um, in, in one piece. A lot of times these are broken. Before I do anything else, I want to see what the speakers look like, so I'm going to take them out. Here's the right hand speaker, so I'll start undoing that. So bugs have got into that and eaten it. The centre little cloth filter is missing so I'll have to go and fix that up. But uh, generally it's not too bad. This is the left hand speaker and it's suffered the same problems. Yo. This end here has been eaten away. This has been stored somewhere damp, probably out in a shed or garage or something for a while and the bugs have just got into it. So I'll have to see what I can do with that. I'm going to have a look at this speaker. This is the better one of the two. It's got a big hole in here. When I got the speakers, somebody had put tape on it. And I actually thought that's not a bad idea. What I've done is put a bit of fresh masking tape behind here, just, just big enough to cover it. And what I thought I can do is paint some rubber and cement on it. Now the tape doesn't restrict the movement of the cone, so that's okay. I thought I'll try some of this elect liquid electrical tape, which I've used before on speakers. It works quite well. So my thinking is, if I put this on here, it should form a rubber membrane, if you like. Now what we're trying to do here is seal up the hole. The structure of the cone's good. There's nothing wrong with the cone itself. So there it is there. I'll let that dry. We'll see what it looks like. There's another hole over here. I'll fix that. I've done the same thing. Just put a tiny little bit of uh, tape on the back. I think that's all it'll need. I'll set this one aside and we'll do the other one. Now here's the other speaker. It's still got the tape on it that the other person had on before me. So I'm just going to use his tape as a back, backing for my rubber solution. Um, same deal. Still got the tape behind it. I'll use his tape as long as it stays there. I'll let that dry. It takes a little while. It sort of flattens out after a while. So we'll see what it looks like in the morning. The two speakers have been drying for a few days and I'm very happy with the way they've come out. I was able to remove all the masking tape from behind the speakers. So there's nothing behind anymore. It's quite uh, clear. 
So all that's left now is a very thin membrane of this uh, rubber material and uh, I don't think it's inhibiting at all. I need to put some little bits of felt in the middle and these speakers are ready to go back. Now something I didn't check was the uh, voice coil which I should have done in the first place. 3.8 3.8 so they're both good I'll put them back in the cabinet I've mixed up a bit of filler here I'll just try and repair the missing piece here I'll leave it like that I need to um, just shape that to what I want I'm going to try and put some veneer in there so I'm going to have to remove that flush back to where the veneer goes on all right that should be hard enough Take this bottom board off. That's rebuilt now, that's good. Uh, this bit of timber here is a bit loose, so I'm going to glue it and then I'll clamp it flat and I'll let it sit overnight for the glue to dry or come back and have a look tomorrow. Uh, this one I'm going to put a bit of veneer in. I've got a little colour chart that I've made using the veneer I've got, so uh, I'll just have a look. I reckon walnut is the colour. It's pretty close. Yeah, maybe oak's a bit closer, so I might go with oak. Now I need to just clean this up a little bit. I'm trying to avoid straight lines, although clearly you can't avoid it everywhere. I'll just put a bit of tape over here and then I'll rub this. Alright, so I should be able to just cut along there and make that a bit wider. see how we went. I'll leave the tape on because this is very small. It'll just fall apart if I take the tape off. Uh, it's not bad there. Could use a bit more off down here. Okay that's that's pretty good. There's a tiny little gap there which I didn't want but that'll, that's okay. The rest will just be wood filler so it won't matter. You won't see it. So I'll put a bit of adhesive on it here. Okay, I'll glue it on. I'm going to have to hold this down for a minute or two, but uh, I'll come back a bit later on when it's dried and uh, we'll have a look and see what it's going to look like. This has been drying overnight and this little end bit is in the wrong place. It's moved. I'll try and clean it up a bit. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. There's some gaps there, but they'll be filled with wood filler. You can put glue in there and then sand it and the glue will pick up the filings, but I always find it comes out a bit lighter. I'll sand this flush. I'm getting close now, so I'm just starting to impact the old uh, bit of veneer on here. Uh, this is coming along all right. That part there is all right. This part here needs a bit of filler in it, and so does that. So I'm going to stop now, put some filler in, let it dry, then I'll sand the whole thing flush, and uh, it should come out all right. It looks pretty good there. So I'll just fill all the gaps with some filler here. Down here. There's some on the side as well. So I'll let that dry, and I'll come back and sand it up. While I'm waiting for that one to dry, um, I've prepared this area here. That's the filler I put in yesterday. I have um, sort of trimmed it. It's pretty much that shape. I said don't make straight lines and there it is there. But it's at the side. I don't, um, you don't generally see the side, so I'm happy to leave it like that. Now this is going to be the same routine as yesterday, so I'm not going to bore you with it. Uh, same idea though, I'll just shade in the area here so I can find the edge. 
trace it out on another bit of veneer and cut it out and glue it in. So I'll glue this piece in and then come back and I'll show you how it's come out. It's dried off, so I'll just sand it off a bit. That's coming up okay. Unfortunately that corner's a bit of a mess. I mean, in the overall picture you're not going to see it, but I'll just try and um, fill that up a bit more. This glue has been drying overnight, so I'll take off the clamps. That's still got the masking tape on it. That's, uh, that's come up pretty good. I will treat that the same as the other one. I'll just sand it up, clean it up, and uh, put some filler in it, and that'll be finished. Uh, this corner here I'm not happy with at all, so I'm going to cut that out again, and I will put a new piece of veneer in. I've cut a bit more veneer out, I'll glue that on. There's my little patch on there, the camera died just as I put that on the last uh, bit of video. Uh, but anyway, I glued it on, I backfilled it with some filler in here to give it some support. It didn't have any before and I think that's why it sort of fell off. So I'll sand that off and I think that'll be about done. It looks pretty good. Alright, that looks good. That's come up really nice. Um, most of that's invisible, it's just that line there. But around here, it's, it's uh, virtually invisible. Yeah, this is the oak stain I looked at the other day, and uh, I think it'll be very close. There it is there. Now it needs to be rubbed off, it's still wet uh, as it dries. That'll dry a bit lighter than it is now. Uh, there's the repair, and you can see the line. Yes, whenever you put filler in, it's going to stand out a bit. But overall, I think that looks pretty good, and when you stand back, you're not going to focus on that, you're not going to even notice it. The finish on the cabinet generally is pretty good, so as you can see the top here is fine, it's got some scratches up the end there, but nothing major. So what I thought I might try, I want to keep it as original as I can, but I thought I might try some restorer finish. I've never used this, I don't know how it's going to work. So I'll give it a go, I'll try it in an area that you won't see, and just see what it does. Uh, the colour here is dark oak, you don't have to match it exactly, It's as long as it's sort of in the ballpark. It's fine. I don't think it's got a lot of colour in it. It has a little bit of colour, but I think it's mainly a... Well, I'm not sure what it is. A solvent? Yeah, I don't know. So I'll try a bit in one corner. We'll just see if it works. Uh, I'll just do this back edge here. This is uh, grease and uh, wax remover. So I'll use that because this may have been greased and waxed over the... I don't know, what is it? 50 years? 55 years or so. Now I did test this in an inconspicuous place. It doesn't affect the finish. Uh, it says to use a pad and just apply it uh, with the grain. Well, actually it says if you use the uh, four zero steel wool, then use a, uh, you do it with the grain. Well, I've been pressed so far. Well, look, I'm really happy with that. That has, it's so much better with the angle I'm looking at it. This is all dull with white splotches through it. And here it's uh, back to its original timber color. So really happy with the result there. I'll do this whole end panel and uh, see how that comes up. Now there's the end bay finished. It looks fantastic. It's really brought it together. It looks, yeah, I'm, wow, I'm amazed. All right. I was skeptical of that stuff ever working, but you know, if you've got a good enough base, it just rejuvenates it. It's good. That's all done now, and wow, it looks it looks really good. It's um, almost factory fresh couple of little scratches in there. Oh, look, you can't even see them. No, seriously, looking at it, you couldn't see any defects in it now. Yeah. Uh, the restorer finish on the can here, it says to put a coat of wax on the top over the restorer finish. So I've done that and uh, it's, it's come up nice. So I'm really happy with the cabinet. I'm going to start reassembling the cabinet. So these uh, vents on the end for the electrostatic speakers are going to go in. Uh, I can put the original speakers back. They've been repaired. 
Uh, yesterday I cleaned all this out and I've painted it with a varnish or coated it in varnish to just keep the chipboard together. It does start to flake occasionally if it gets a bit moist. So that's looking good. There's something else I have to do to this before I can start putting the parts back in. This is the cutout for the record player and there's bits of a cardboardy fabric hanging down. Now I think it probably had a cover here. This area here is the speaker area so it's a speaker box almost and this would have had some sort of cover on it to stop the sound coming back through the uh, record player aperture and I think someone's just ripped it out or it's fallen apart I'm not sure so I'm gonna have to make a new one of these because you don't want that sound coming up and hitting the bottom of the record player it might make the record skip for a start but it'll affect the sound quality too so I'm going to make another box to fit underneath here I've started making the cover for the record player I've put the record player in there and just held it up with its transit screws but it's not as easy as I originally thought. I was just going to make a square box, throw it in there, and that was the end of it. But the speaker's got to go in there, and this cover has to clear it. So I'm having to build an angle in there to get away from the speaker, but not foul on the mechanism. I've cut most of the timber up so I can start assembling it, I think. See if it fits. Let's get the cloth off to keep the dust off. All right, let's see how it goes. No, it doesn't fit. <laughs> Bloody hell. Well, that doesn't fit. Uh, this angle is not enough. I thought I had measured it properly, but clearly I didn't. So I need to uh, angle this piece of timber further over. I will uh, do all that. I'll come back and see if it'll fit the second time. Alright, let's see if it fits this time. There you go, that's better. Good, very good. Alright, that's cleared that speaker quite well. Uh, it's hitting here, I think, or it's very close to hitting. That's the speed selector there, I think the lever. It's not hitting that, but it's getting very close. So I'll just scallop a bit of the wood out there and give it some clearance. Apart from that, I think it's pretty good. I've cut a relief in there to give clearance for that speed selector, so that'll work all right now. I've cut out a lid to fit on here, so I'll glue that on and just put some little uh, nails to hold it till the adhesive dries. But I've cleaned all the top of the edge up there, so uh, it's pretty good. I'm going to put a coat of some sort of finish on it just to stop it soaking up any moisture in the air. I just want to make sure this still fits after I put that lid on. I think we're right. Yeah, so there should be clearance between it, whatever's underneath. I can't see it now, of course. I've given this a coat of paint to protect it. I'm a bit concerned this area here where it's quite large is going to be a passive radiator speaker. Uh, so I need to deaden that a bit. So I've cut out a bit of sound deadener and I'm going to glue that on the top there. It's self-adhesive, so it'll just stick on there. And that should help to stop that um, vibrating and sending that sound back. Yeah, that's that's killed it completely. It was a drum before, so that's good. This surface is in contact with the board in the radiogram. Um, I want to seal it off. It, stop it vibrating for one thing but to stop any air getting in and out of it. I've got some self-adhesive rubber strip here so I'm going to put that on there and go all the way around. I've made up some little angle brackets so I can attach this cover into the radiogram so I'm just going to fit those on. Yeah. 
that's all done now and yeah look it's ridiculously over the top but anyway um, there's a hole there for the plug and the lead to come through for the power I tried to I tried to do this as simply as I could and really it's you could run a truck over this thing there's no problem anyway it'll it'll do the job I said earlier in the video there was a back that goes on here and it's been taken out and discarded I've got a photo of it here that I've found so I'm going to try and replicate it which I've got to say I'm not looking forward to but I've got an idea how I can do it I've flipped the radiogram over so it's facing the right way up now I've made a little panel to fit in here or well, cut a bit out anyway I've got to drill holes in the back panel for the DIN plugs and the speaker plugs so I've put a bit of tape along there and I'm measuring from this edge here and all the way to there and then I've just written the measurement there to 60 to 88 and I can just transfer that onto the masonite. I've transferred a bit of masking tape over here. I'll just mark roughly. I haven't measured where the tape is, uh, but there's the three holes I have to drill. So the first mark is 260. I'll just mark that. And the next one's 445. I've got two hole saws here. I'll go and cut the uh, holes in this masonite or the hardboard if it's called that. I've drilled the three holes for the sockets and I've put some relief in for the uh, electrical cord. All I have to do now is fill this up with tiny little holes. As we saw in the photo of the original back panel, it's got tiny little holes all over it. And I was wondering how I was going to reproduce that. Then I remembered the lower panel in the back of the radiogram has got the same hole. So I can use that as a template. And there it is there. You can see the whole length of it there. And I've just got one end of it uh, clamped down here. And I've got clamps all over it. And the reason is if you try and drill through masonite and it's not securely against the sacrificial board underneath, it will um, just delaminate and fall apart. So it needs to have some support behind it. So I've clamped it down as hard as I can and covered it as well as I can. I need to drill all the holes along here, none of these here. So I've got a clamp here with this push down. I'm going to do this end here. I can do some of the other end down there. Then I'll just move these over and finish off in that section there. Once I've drilled out these holes, I've got to move the top panel along a bit and drill out some more up the other end. I've drilled out the holes up to here, I've moved these blocks over and I'm just going to drill the remaining, you know, there's probably 20 holes there and we'll have a look and see how it comes out. Alright, there it is, I'll take this board off and we'll have a look and see how they've come up. Look, it looks pretty good on the side, you can see. Some areas it has started to delaminate the masonite at the back there. I'll put some glue on this just to hold it back together again. But the front's all right. I guess what I should have done is drilled some holes, taken it all off again, and then clear everything out, then just clamp it down again. But that would have taken forever. Uh, so I've just got this bit here to do. I'll finish all that off and we'll have a look at it then. I've finished all the drilling and I just want to see what it looks like in here. There you go. So that doesn't look bad. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, good. Now I've got to cut some sort of latch in here. It had a screw uh, with a sliding latch behind it and you pushed it up, did the screw up. So I, I'll try and replicate that, I guess. I could just drill some holes and put a screw in the top. That would be easier. Uh, but I've never done easy. I guess I'll stick with trying to make something there. The original design, if we looked at the photo here, uh, it had two little brackets that slid up behind two blocks of wood that are mounted on the bottom of the uh, cabinet and the, this bracket would slide up so the bracket's shaped like that it has a screw through here and I think it has a little tag sticking out there that goes in the same slot so you can just push it up, tighten the screw up and the bracket will hold under that block I've come up with some measurements, that's going to be 15 mil the block is 12 mil thick, so I'll go 12 here. Down here I've come up with a nominal 20, and then I've got to make a little tang sticks through here, and it needs to be big enough so you can push it up with your finger while you do the screw up, so I'll probably make that, I don't know, 10 mil, something like that. First thing I'm going to do is this bend right in the corner here, uh, that's, uh, what is that, 12 that way, and 15 the other way, so that's 27. 
I've put a mark on here at 27 mil from the end and I'll just check it against my square to make sure it is square, it's okay. And now just bend that. Okay. Uh, the next bend is 12 millimeters, so I'll make sure that's about 12. Now I have to try and do this with my finger, but this steel is pretty soft, so it's okay. Now hopefully we've got 12 mil in there. It's good. Okay. I'll also just put a little ramp on the top of that last bend to help it get home when it needs to push up against the uh, the block of wood at the back. Now the last bit is going to be here. That's 20 millimeters. So I'm going to make a little tang that'll fit in there. So I've got to cut this out. I'll just cut that off there. And I hope I've got enough material to make the other one. I've cut that out and bent the little tang over and that's just going to sit through the masonite and you'll be able to push that to move this up to lock it. So that's one bracket done. All I've got to do now is rinse and repeat and I'll make another one. I've got to put a little slot in here for that little clamp screw and it's little tang that sits down and I'm going to use the router. All right, I think that'll clean up okay. Uh, that's one done. I'll do the other end. I've cleaned up the slot. Looks good. Uh, I've put a hole in the little uh, bracket there. So I'll see if it's going to work. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's cute. I love that. Okay. I'll put the other one on and I'll try it on the radio. All right, let's put it in. I'm running out of light, so this is going to come out a bit dark. Um, now the little, that should just slide up. Oops. Oh, nice. <laughs> Done, look at that. <laughs> See if we can go two from two. Alright, uh, look I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. This was so much work. I've spent most of the day doing this. So uh, a lot of work, but gee it pays off. It just looks good. Nobody will ever see it. Ah oh, well. Oops, I just noticed I haven't put a hole in for the antenna. So I'll have to go and have a look in there and see what needs to be done. I've managed to cut a little hole there for the antenna in the ground. Um, I think I got away with it. It doesn't look too bad. The speaker's ready to go in now. I've put a seal around the edge to seal it off and a little felt uh, cut out in the center to cover the magnet. I've done the same thing to the other speaker, so uh, just a matter of putting these two speakers in. Before I put the turntable back, there's a few little things I need to do. One is to remove the uh, temporary power lead that's on here. Another thing is these two brackets here. They're designed to stop you lifting this record player out of the um, its housing, its base. Once the transport screws are removed, these just stop you pulling it all the way out. At some point in its life, somebody has ripped off that cardboard cover that was over the bottom of this uh, when it's sitting in the radiogram, bent these in so they could lift it out instead of undoing the screws. That's probably understandable if you didn't know what you were doing, but I think that's how it's worked. So I will bend them back. They don't really need to, but I'll do it anyway. Um, seeing they've been bent, I'm going to leave them there and they should just go back where they were. Now I'll have to undo the two screws in here, slide them back and then uh, put them out once the record player is mounted. Uh, just looking at it again, I don't think they're going back where they're supposed to, so I'll have to take them out and straighten them properly. Now the last thing I need to do is this three pin din that plugs into the back of the radio. Uh, I need to put a new one on. I've got a new one here, so I'll just solder that on. That was easy, I've finished already. There's a few things I need to do to the radio before I put it back in the cabinet. Uh, one of them is the silicon rectifier that I put in the other week and I put a resistor in there to drop the voltage down which is working fine. I did a calculation on the voltage drop to work out how many amps were going through it and therefore the wattage of the resistor uh, but turns out the calculation was okay but the way I measured the voltage drop wasn't. 
the best way I thought to make sure everything was going to be okay was to measure the temperature of the resistor. I've got a little um, temperature probe in here and it's connected to my meter. And this radio has been on flat out for about three hours and it's got 50 degrees. So I'm happy with it running at 50 degrees. That's about what I expect. I could put a 10 watt uh, resistor in there, but space really just didn't allow it. It could be done, uh, but I thought if I can get away with a five, I will. There used to be two paper capacitors here. Uh, I've replaced them. There were some comments on it. I wasn't sure if they were paper or not, but it turns out they are paper. And with the new schematic I found with the record player the other week, they actually tell you that they are paper. Uh, there's the capacitor and the two dots. And here they are here, uh, two capacitors with full dots, and that's the ones that, uh, that I've replaced. They are paper. So I've replaced them. Another problem I found with the radio is that the uh, output isn't balanced. I suspected it at the start, but I convinced myself it was okay. But I've put the oscilloscope on and there's definitely uh, an imbalance. And I've traced it back to one of the output transformers. I measured across the uh, primary of both transformers. The primary total on one was 743. The primary total on the other one was 823. Uh, from the center tap output on this side, it's 369 and 374, which should give you that number if I added it up. But on this side, uh, I've, I've got 823, there's 452, 371. So uh, that one, those three seem to be in step, this one's out. So something's, something's wrong with that primary and that second transformer. I'll put the two part numbers for the transformers on the screen. If someone happens to have one lying around, that'd be fantastic. Let me know and I'll, I'll see if I can organise to get it off you. As I said, it won't stop me putting this radio back together. I need to finish it off for the video and I'll come back later and do some more testing and try and get some spare parts. So with that, I'll start putting it back together. I have the case inside the room with me here, so I'm going to fit the components back in and just see what it sounds like. I haven't tested the electrostatic speakers, so I'm pretty keen to see what they're like. I probably won't work, I would think. I've got it all back together now, I'll just put the radio on. That little town called Mao, where you fly back to Johannesburg. And sitting opposite me is Sam Neill and his daughter, and they have been on a, on a safari as well. So of course it's a very, you know, there's only half a dozen of us sitting in the airport, and I introduced myself and I said, hello Sam, you know, and he was very friendly. you can no longer function in the outside world you, you need refuge and you go in there to get better but in many ways when you first get there gosh it sounds good it's really got that old 60s 70s bass yeah it's it's fantastic i'll have a go at the record player Wow, this is amazing. I would love to play 30 seconds or something of Engelbert singing. The tone and the depth and the warmth, it's just taken me right back to the 60s and 70s before we had CDs. And don't get me wrong, CDs are fantastic, but these just sound different. And even the warmth of the cabinet, you don't sort of get that anymore. You just get components sitting in a rack. <laughs> I, I can't explain it. I'm, I'm lost for words. Yeah, loving it. Uh, there's another issue. Those electrostatic speakers don't work, which is pretty much what I expected. 
I did put a microphone up to the speaker, but that's not going to show you that it's not working. I'll pull one of them out and pull it apart and just see if I can do anything with it. I don't expect too much. Uh, failing that, I'll just put a normal uh, tweeter in it. I'll put a Piezo tweeter in it. I've taken the electrostatic speaker out, and that's all it is. It's on a bit of masonite here or a hardboard. So to get it apart, I'm going to take these rivets out, and then it's got moulded in rivets in here, so they're going to be a problem. So I'll go and take these out first. I'll go out the garage and do that. Well, that's all it is. My understanding of how these work is that it's got a positive plate, a negative plate, and then you put your audio signal on top, and the little differences make the little plate, one of the plates vibrates and gives you the sound. So they're, they're fairly high up. You won't, you know, they're no good for bass, of course. So that's why they're used for tweeters. There's one of the plates there, and there's a little plastic keeper, I guess you could call it, and that's pushing the plate down against the back and uh, holding it there. So there's one there as well, of course. Now, to get these off, they've kind of melted a rivet over. I'll go out in the workshop again, and I will try and remove the enough plastic here to pop these off. To get that off, I just ran around there with this little bit in the Dremel. Almost pops off there. Anyway. I unsoldered the wire that was on there as well. All right, let's see what we've got here. Ooh, bending stuff there. So there's the other contact. It's, it's a pad, like a felt pad. That's not what I was really expecting, but I guess that's... It's got a plastic sheet in there. So that little contact just sits on that plastic sheet and makes... Is that conductive? Hmm, deep blow. That's conductive. You've got one wire here which will be negative, and then you've got plate voltage sitting on here and charging this. Okay. So that's it. That's all it is. So I wonder what vibrates. That. Does that plastic vibrate? Under that contact is a bit of what I looks like used to be cork. So the cork would have been pushing against the felt to push through onto the back of this plastic uh, conductive sheet here. So what's happening is this is compressing and this is not contacting anymore. So if I put a new bit of felt in, that should fix it. I'm going okay here. I've got a bit of felt and I've cut it out to the right size. I've got a bit of thin rubber and I'll replace this uh, old cork with that. And I'll see how it all fits together. I'm not sure if that rubber is going to be a bit thick, but it's only, I don't know, it's not even a mill thick. I'll put some glue on that rubber there. Oh, now it's stuck on my pliers. Anyway. Uh, the glue's uh, dried enough now. I'll put that in there. I've already put the little contact in. So that should go that way. And just sit there. Now, I've melded those on, and they're not bad. I, that's pretty good. Uh, not as good as it used to be, I guess, but once it's mounted on the board, of course, they're held down anyway. As you can see, I've had it connected up. It doesn't work. There is a signal coming out. You can see it on the oscilloscope, uh, but nothing, nothing coming out of here. I'm going to have another go at this. I've pretty much given up, but I think I can maybe just have one more shot. Now, what I've done there, this used to have a tape on it to hold this diaphragm on. And the tape had disintegrated. So I replaced the um, tape around the outside there. Now I ruined this bit here. I th think I, I saw unsoldered it from here. I shouldn't have. I should have undone it from the little wire on the tag. So that was mistake number one. The other thing I think I did wrong was I used a piece of rubber in here. And I think this really would be better with something like a foam that can compress. So I'm going to take the rubber out and I'll put some foam in and I will polish this little piece of conductive material with something. 
I found a bit of this open foam weather sealer and it's perfect. That's even sticky on the back. So if I put that in there, let's put this bit of felt back in. Um, I don't know if I said it, I, I've actually taped that damage down there. Hopefully that, that'll uh, stop it rattling or I don't know what it's going to do. Unfortunately this speaker didn't work again, so I pulled out the second one. This is the second tweeter and I pulled this apart and worked on this as well. I took what I learned from the first one to do this one. Uh, I unsoldered it from here and not down there. Uh, the pad that's in there I just rotated it 180 degrees. I didn't use double sided tape but I did put some sellotape around the edges. I don't know what it does but I put something there. It had what appeared to be some sort of sellotape anyway. But it still doesn't work. This is completely silent like the other one. So uh, someone in the comments last time said there was somebody that had done it and it was on the internet if you search for it. And I had searched for it but I found nothing about it. But I was looking in YouTube and not just in the general blogs and I found it on Radio Museum. He did exactly the same speaker, did exactly what I did and uh, put it together and it works fine. So why these aren't working, I don't know. I'll see if I can get a couple of tweeters, uh, but failing that I'll, I'll just leave them out of the circuit until such time as I can find something to replace them. I managed to get a couple of these PZO horn speakers, so they'll go in alright. They're a good size. They're not hi-fi quality of course, uh, but they will broaden the uh, stereo stage and uh, that's about all they really need to do. You don't need a crossover with these. Uh, I've temporarily installed this and tried it out and it sounds fine. It sounds the same as what the electrostatic speaker does really. So these are a good substitute I reckon. I did expect I would have to put a resistor in here to try and uh, adjust the sound but the, the, the volume is pretty good. So I'm not going to put any resistors in there. I'll go to the workshop, mount these on the backboards and uh, reinstall them. There's the horn speaker installed. I did not modify the original backplate. I modified the speaker so it would fit. So if you take that speaker off, you can put the original uh, electrostatic speakers back in. They work really well. They, they just installed. I didn't do anything to it. Uh, they fill in that top area and they broaden the stereo sound stage for it. Considering the amount of volume these add, they're, they're pretty good. I was quite impressed with the way they work. been a big job. I finally got there only to have that right channel not working and it's almost stopped working now so I'm not going to run it any longer. I need to pull it apart, determine what's going on. I don't want to damage those output valves. They're going to cost too much. So there will be a continuation of this video but it won't be for a little while because I need to buy the parts to repair what's wrong with this thing. But I will put it out eventually and then I'll put this in its correct setting and we'll play some music on it. This has been an enormous undertaking. There was not a lot to do on the radio, apart from the fact that it doesn't work. The record player gave me a bit of trouble. Uh, the cabinet took a lot of work to get going. That's taken me well over a week of working on it just to try and get it finished and brought up to some sort of standard. And I've left all the nicks and bumps in it. I wasn't worried about that. It's 50 odd years old. So it needs to look 50 years old, but it's in very good condition. And the, the finish has come up really well. I'm very happy with the way it looks now. I did run it long enough to check out those new tweeters and they are brilliant. They work really well, really well. Very happy with that. Because I'm not using the electrostatic tweeters anymore, I can just use an output transformer which is just push-pull and it doesn't have the winding for the electrostatic speaker. I had a lot of fun doing this and uh, the result was fantastic. Once I get it working properly, uh, this will be brilliant in our home. I've got a stack of records there, so we're going to have a lot of fun just going through and sorting out the good from the bad. When this was working properly, I recorded a bit of Engelbert Humperdinck. I can only play about six seconds of each song. I'll just try and put something together for the finish of this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun. I hope you can join me next time for my next radio adventure. Just for one
Spanish eyes I wonder should I go or should I stay Please